Good Tuesday evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Western Mass News at 6. I'm Chris Pisano. Let's take a quick look at what making, what's making the latest headlines. The governor today announcing an $800 million investment in the state's health care providers. The funding will support those in the health care industry, including hospitals and nursing facilities impacted by COVID-19. Here in Western Mass, setup is underway at the Big E Fairgrounds in West Springfield that will be used as a testing facility to check first responders for COVID-19. And in addition to the state lab, there are now 25 public and private labs testing for COVID-19 here in the state. A COVID-19 recovery center now opening in Ludlow for first responders who test positive. The Hamden County Sheriff's Department gave Western Mass News a first look before the doors opened up. Western Mass News reporter Sarah Grinelli joins us live from Ludlow after touring that facility earlier in the day. Sarah. Chris, the Sheriff's Department says it took them about a full day to get the facility ready. And they say this is just a way to say thank you to first responders who put their life on the line. And so they don't have to bring home the coronavirus. Our first responders are heroes and they need to be treated as such. Frontline workers who have the coronavirus can now stay at the first responder recovery home at Hamden County Correctional Center in Ludlow. Our first responders put themselves on the line, their lives and their families safety every day. And when they need help, somebody has got to help. On Tuesday, Western Mass News is invited inside to see where first responders who become infected with COVID-19 can now stay free of charge. We spoke with Sheriff Nick Kochi, who says this place allows those on the front lines to recover without having to expose their family to the virus. It's about showing respect, gratitude, and uh, thankful uh, gestures to our first responders who are out there on the front lines every day supporting our community. So they're going to be treated like VIPs here. The housing is set up inside the pre-release center. He says 84 single rooms are available. If it's a family member that is um, positive with you or a child, you actually could come here. We have the capacity to put three people in a room. The facility comes equipped with a gym, a kitchen, a library, and even a room with therapy dogs. Doctors are volunteering by using telehealth. And if first responders need a breath of fresh air, they can head onto the track. Sheriff Kochi says he has worked with local leaders to raise more than $36,000. He is also working with FEMA and MEMA to open the facility. Money or not, we're staying open for our first responders. They have my Un, uh, un, unequivocal support that if they need a place to stay, we're here for them. And he says they will stay open for as long as the community needs. Getting them into recovery and healthy so they can get back on the front line and support our community. And the recovery center is still looking for more volunteer doctors. And so if you would like to volunteer, if you're a doctor or send in a donation, we have two numbers posted on our website. That's westernmassnews.com. Live in Ludlow, Sarah Grinelli, Western Mass News. Sarah, thank you for that live report. Governor Baker announcing a large amount of funding for the state's health care system today. $800 million will be invested to support health care providers, including hospitals and nursing facilities hit hard financially by the coronavirus pandemic. More than $400 million will be allocated to hospitals, more than $80 million will go to nursing facilities, and more than $300 million will be allocated to other health care providers that are delivering medical care or providing services that keep residents safe in their homes and out of the hospitals. The state also launching a nursing home mobile testing program and a nursing home family resource line. The state DPH reporting 15,202 confirmed cases of COVID-19. That is up 1,365 from yesterday, and there are 356 deaths. But it is important to note that today's report does reflect deaths over the entire weekend and the past 24 hours. So far, the state has conducted 81,000 344 total tests. And now breaking it down for you county by county, Suffolk reporting 3,245 COVID-19 cases. That's the highest number in the state. Following Middlesex County reporting 3,187. Here in Western Mass, Hamden County reporting 997 cases, Hampshire 158, Franklin 118 cases, and Berkshire County has 278 cases. We have new information tonight regarding the veterans' deaths at the Holyoke Soldiers' Home. 
25 veterans have now died, and that is up three from Saturday. Of those who died, 18 did test positive for COVID-19. Three were negative, and three more tests are still pending. The cause of one death remains unknown. Meantime, 65 residents have tested positive and 94 negative. When it comes to the staff, 67 workers tested positive, 210 others negative. And the Chelsea Soldiers Home recording five veterans' deaths. Four of those who died did test positive for COVID-19. One test is still pending. 14 veteran residents have tested positive. 19 other residents tested negative for the virus. 258 veteran residents have been tested and they are awaiting results. Meantime, nine staff members have also tested positive. Since last night, 12 more residents have tested positive for COVID-19 at Heritage Hall West Nursing Home in Agawam. A Western Mass News reporter Leon Purvis is live for us outside Heritage Hall West, where he just spoke with a family member of a resident who tested positive. Leon. Chris, Laurel Charland is upset that she found out from a social worker about her mom's test results. Now, Charland spoke to Western Mass News last week when she was concerned about her mother inside the facility. But now she has learned her mother has tested positive for the coronavirus. I spoke to her by phone a short time ago, and she says she has been told her mother is showing mild symptoms. Charland says she thinks families need to be better informed. I want them to get their, their acting gear. Somebody's got to do something before oh, before everybody's family gets it and they all end up, God, I don't even want to say it. To address issues many are facing across the state, Massachusetts now has a hotline set up for families of nursing home residents who have coronavirus questions. Just call that number on your screen, 617-660-5399. We did reach out to the spokesperson for Heritage Hall West. We did not hear back from them yet. From them yet. Live in Agawam, Leon Purvis, Western Mass News. Leon, thank you for that live report. And now for a story you'll see only here on Western Mass News. For the past few weeks, the city of Springfield has given out thousands of meals to local children who would normally be receiving food through the school system. But for parents who are essential employees, work unusual hours, or just don't have access to regular transportation, going to the food pickup sites can be challenging. Western Mass News reporter Audrey Russo has more on a local woman who's volunteering to bridge that gap. The city of Springfield has set up 17 food pickup sites where families can get meals for their children while schools are closed due to coronavirus. If you don't have no transportation, it's not going to work. So that's where I come in. For essential worker parents who may not have time or transportation to one of those 17 pickup sites, there's only one Kim Rivera. Right now I have five families this week. Last week I had six families. Rivera has been using her car to deliver meals and school work to Springfield families for free. There are some people that are actually working and maybe the grandparents or the neighbors are watching their children. Rivera, who's a local activist, got the idea from Doris Harris, who works at the Gandara Center. Harris, who delivers to her own clients, tells Western Mass News she noticed a need from the community shortly after the schools closed. People that work and they catch the bus and they have their children home uh, with older children who don't have a means to uh, walk to the school. And though they have to maintain social distancing, the women say one of the best parts of making these deliveries is being able to wave to the families who are in isolation. We have to be six feet above, so we put it on the porch and we can just give them a nice wave. For Rivera, the services that help local students succeed in times of health are even more important in times of uncertainty. And it's important to make sure we support our essential workers, and it's also important to support our families. We also want to make sure our kids are still fed and still being, have an opportunity to their education. In Springfield, Audrey Russo, Western Mass News.